Yeah, Truth Seeker, welcome to my channel and community where we focus on developing the knowledge, understanding and wisdom to accelerate your ascension into the fifth dimension and higher if you are keen. For those returning, welcome back and a massive hello to the new subscribers or listeners. My name is David Kerriton. I am a galactic astrologer, author, philosopher, indigo warrior and EDM DJ. You can feel free to check out my playlist on YouTube uh, for a bit of fun. Today we are going to talk about the Schumann Resonance and take a look at the upcoming full moon on February 27, 2021. As a reminder, I use the Galactic Astrology System, which includes the 13th constellation of Ophiuchus. Galactic Astrology is one of the oldest astrological systems, and it is aligned to the actual time the Sun spends in each of the 13 constellations as opposed to the arbitrary and false 12 wheel Placidus Ptolemaic system which assigns 30 days to each sign. The Ptolemaic or Roman system removed the divine feminine intelligence of Ophiuchus. I talk extensively in other blogs about the galactic astrology, so if you would like to know more, please check those out. Firstly, let's have a look at the Schumann Resonance. So what I'm going to do is a screen share Bear with me here. Okay, so let's take a look at, I've got three um, screen grabs here, which cover the periods uh, from the 7th and 8th of February, the 18th and 19th of February, and the 24th and 25th of February. So there's six days in the last uh, two weeks or so that have been very intense. Um, where I haven't, um, there's no information, there's, it, it's really been, hasn't been worth having a look at. But as I mentioned in my last blog about the Schumann Resonance, when we see these intense periods of white, it's well worth having a look at. And because there's been so much of it going on in the last couple of weeks leading up to this full moon, I thought it was appropriate just to jump on quickly and have a look at it and just have another uh, quick uh, conversation about what I think um, uh, this is leading to and what's going on here. So we can see, or you can see, um, that on the 7th of February and the 8th of February, and particularly around about the 18th or the 19th of February, um, that is very intense energy. The uh, for those who are hearing this for the first time, may or may not be aware of the Schumann Residence, these charts, and I'll provide a link in the show notes um, for the Schumann Residence. Um, this is technology which has been a long, uh, around a long time, but on the left-hand side here are the Hertz frequency range, or the Hertz cycles per second, um, and starting at zero, going right up to about 40 Hertz. We can see that um, on the 7th, there was some pretty heavy concentration uh, of energy around the, the uh, 0 to 16, even up to 20 hertz. And on the 8th of February, very intense energy right through to, in fact, it goes off the chart, it goes beyond um, 40 hertz, but mostly. Um, up to around 36 hertz from 0 hertz to 36 hertz and then again on the 19th between 0 and getting up as high as around that 28 to 30 hertz um, and you can see um, also some energy here and again another just in the last day or so not as intense as these two periods or particularly the 8th and 9th but certainly worth having a look at uh, 24th and 25th, and of course the new moon, uh, sorry, the full moon, the full moon is in uh, uh, two or three days time, depending of course on when you will be listening to this, it's on the 27th of February, in the early hours of the morning I believe, Eastern time, something like 3.17am, if you're in the southern hemisphere it's around 9 o'clock, I'm in Auckland, uh, and if you're wondering where that screen uh, saver comes from that you're looking at on Zoom, um, that's actually our waterfront. That's uh, by my home. Uh, I walk around there most days. Um, that's one of my things that I do to chill out. 
Um, and uh, those of you who are aware that the America's Cup is still proceeding um, in these uh, crazy times that we live in, in New Zealand, this is where it's happening. That's the waterfront, um, obviously. Um, and in the background um, is the Sky Tower. There's some insane amounts of money. Just um, you realize when you're listening to me that I jump around a little bit, I get these sort of distracted. But when you look at that um, screensaver, I've got a friend who sells these boats or used to sell. He used to be a boat broker and there's some absolutely stupid amounts of money, 700. I said to him, how much are each of these? And they're big boats, right? These are, these are um, uh, massive, massive. They're not yachts. They're actually motor powered boats. So I said to my friend, friend Trent, how much are these? And he said, you know, most of them go for around about 750,000, that's New Zealand dollars. So if you're in the US, it's probably 400K US and upwards. So a lot of money to be just sitting there doing nothing, but look, I'm distracted. So let's get back to the, <laughs> the Schumann resonance. So we've seen a lot of, I've got in the show notes here, th these are my notes that you don't get access to, but I just read from them but I will provide links for the information. Frazzled nerves. And if I could just, um, before we do a little bit of a deep dive into this, share my own experiences of the last two weeks. I have been feeling, the way that I've been reacting is that uh, incredible tiredness. Um, I wear um, an aura ring, which is a biofeedback device. I've, I've had it for about 12 to 18 months and you can wear it at night, obviously. It's a very discreet ring. If those of you that um, know about the Aura rings, they're really, really wonderful. I love getting that biofeedback because it it tracks when you're awake and when you're sleeping and when you're doing anything at all. It tracks heart rate variability. It tracks the amount of time you spend in, in REM and um, deep sleep, which are different sleep phases, which are all related to... Um, frequencies and the Schumann resonance and brain frequencies, all of this is all linked, which is why I'm mentioning it. And so um, it also tracks temperature, um, time in, in different phases throughout the, the, the sleep cycle. I normally sleep for around six to six and a half hours. I'm a night owl um, by nature, I always have been, um, but I've been over the last 10 to 12 days, I've been finding myself waking up um, going to bed incredibly late, waking up at stupid hours, getting an average of about three to four hours uh, sleep, and, and I just haven't been able to function particularly well. Um, I've been extremely tired. Um, my sleep cycles have been very disrupted. My brain has been going at 100 miles an hour. It normally doesn't. I'm a regular meditator. I, I meditate most days for you know, um, upwards of, of an hour at a time, you know, usually between 30 um, to minutes to an hour. Um, and, um, you know, I've been involved in mindfulness and meditation practices for a number of years. I've been finding myself absolutely cooked, if you like, like um, even during um, just relaxing time, um, I'm getting huge amounts of downloads, um, and they're very, very intense. And I think what this um, Schumann resonance um, is showing us here, and this is why I wanted to talk about it, but also link it to the full moon, which is an incredibly positive, it's a beautiful, beautiful full moon. Um, I think that the last, I was listening to a blog um, just today, and I'm recording this on February 25th in, in New Zealand, so that'd be the 24th in the US, Northern Hemisphere. I was listening to a blog on Higher Self, which is on YouTube. You can look that up. And there was um, Sarah DeCoin, I think her name was, uh, was talking about um, just sh sharing how she's been feeling really pretty frazzled as well. And there's a whole lot of comments that, that are all echoing that. And that's exactly how I've been feeling. So I thought, oh, okay. I don't look at the Schumann resonance every day, but I thought, well, let's just go back and have a look at what's going on. And wow. Not surprising. So let's do again. I've already done a blog on the Schumann resonance. Um, you can find that on my um, page. But 
those of you that are hearing for the first time or are hearing my interpretation of it, I'll, um, I'll do uh, just a recap. Um, so, uh, seventh and eighth, we've had this very intense energy from zero through to 40 uh, hertz. Uh, an absolute blast on the 19th, um, which was, uh, which went right up to around that 28 hertz, but seems to be concentrated very strongly in the zero through to 20 range. And you'll see how that corresponds to brainwave frequencies in different states of mind in a moment. And even in the last couple of days, there's been a, another um, very intense blast um, of electromagnetic energy and frequency affecting the Schumann resonance. Human brain waves, um, and I'll give a link to this. This isn't my um, uh, interpretation. This is coming actually from specialists, and I'll provide the link in the show notes below. Um, so human brain waves, the Schumann resonance, or extremely low frequency ELF tones or pulses, are waves in the Earth's uh, magnetic field that overlap with our brain waves. For those who are on the ascension journey, for those who are ascending and awakening, for those new to the awakening path, there is a correlation between the Schumann resonance, which is the heartbeat of the Earth, it's the Earth's frequency, and your own frequency. And when they say that you're vibrating at the certain frequencies, this is what it's been talking about from a scientific perspective. And um, you know, there are many experts uh, that talk about this and you can find them all over YouTube. My favorite is Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, who talks at length about this. Um, so, uh, you know, if you want to go off and do your own um, down the rabbit hole, I encourage you to do that. Um, Dispenza is awesome, but he's not the only one that talks about the correlation between the, the frequency range of the planet um, you may have heard of the, some of the um, spiritual teachers and healers often refer to the emotional frequencies um, and um, emotional healing um, is all related to um, frequencies and human resonances and different things going on there. So I encourage you to look more into this. It's certainly a big part of my ascension journey. Um, this is why I'm sharing it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Fundamental human resonance is 7.83 hertz, which corresponds to the high theta of the human brainwave range. What are brain waves? At the root of all of our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors is the communication between neurons within our brains. Brain waves are produced by synchronized electrical pulses from masses of neurons communicating with each other. Dispenser calls that the wiring and firing within your brain synapses, and it's also in your heart as well. There are uh, electro frequencies um, in the brain and the heart. They are piezoelectric organs, both the brain and the heart pulse with frequency. Um, brain waves are detected using sensors placed on the scalp. They are divided into bandwidths. Uh, bandwidths obviously is a term that you hear often in the telecommunications in, uh, industry and music industry as well. Um, Bandwidths describe their functions, but are best thought of as a continuous spectrum of consciousness from slow, loud, and functional to fast, subtle, and complex. It is a handy analogy to think of brain waves as musical tones. Low frequency waves are like, a, like the drum beat, the bass line, where the higher frequency brain waves are more like subtle, high pitched flute or the, or the um, harmonies. Like a symphony, the higher and lower frequencies link. Uh, with each other through harmonics. Th this is the, the nuts and bolts of the quantum um, reality. Um, but again, um, I encourage you to um, do your own research on that. And a good place to start is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Brain waves change according to what we're doing and feeling. When slower brain waves are dominant, we can feel tired, slow, sluggish, or dreamy. The higher frequencies are dominant when we feel wired or hyper alert. And that's certainly been my experience over the last couple of weeks, more so than uh, I've felt in a long time, to be fair. Um, brainwave speed is measured in hertz or cycles per second. And these are divided into bands delineating slow, moderate and fast brainwaves. Now the link to all of this information is a company called Brainworks. Um, and I'll provide that 
um, in the show notes. Brainworks was founded in 2007, so all of this commentary is coming from there. Um, they were among the first neurofeedback practices in the United Kingdom today. They are among the world's leading pioneers in home neurofeedback and brain training technologies. The focus is self-development and creativity, emotional trauma, meditation and mindfulness, peak performance and flow states. Um, if you spend any time listening to me talking uh, or you spend time indulging in some of my blogs, you'll find that I use a very Syrian consciousness, um, you know, there's the Andromedians, the Pleiadians, um, the Lyrans. I, I very much relate to the Syrian approach, which is quite technical explanations of um, ascension. Um, and, um, you know, that's why I like to cross reference where the science is and actually say very practically that ascension often is, is just about using tools like meditation and mindfulness and getting yourself into peak performance and flow states and self-development and creativity and dealing with trauma which is what many light workers um would call the shadow so i love this stuff i absolutely love it i get lost in it it's, and i apply it it's very practical um once you, it, it, it gels and it doesn't take long, a little bit of research, a little bit of reading, um, you'll pick up this quite quickly and realize why um, tracking and mapping the Schumann resonance and then having a look at your own reactions to it because we're all linked, everything's linked, um, often can help your, um, your ascension and your self awareness and your development as an evolving consciousness so what we've seen um in the last couple of weeks is a lot of activity in this in, in all of these theta brain waves alpha brain waves beta brain waves and gamma brain waves and we'll just touch on on these um theta is the brain wave rhythm which is associated with drowsiness it also occurs at the first stage of sleep and during meditation so this is where you get to when you are meditating and you're in mindfulness. You're awake, but you're open to mental imagery. It's often associated with um, highly creative states, intuition, daydreaming, and fantasizing. It is also believed to reflect the activity from the, the limbic system, which is the monkey brain, and increased ac activity is observed um, in, in when you're inhibited. So it can work both positively and negatively theta brain waves, that this is the state that you're in, guys, when um, you're probably, if you're a gamer, um, this you're in this state, if you're watching television and you're immersed in um, TV or music or um, even um, exercise, um, you're often in the theta, so you're switched off. I like to say that the theta brain wave states is pretty much when your left brain has gone to sleep and you're highly creative, you're highly receptive, um, and this has been, there's been a lot of intensity. So if you're feeling like you're a little drifty and dreamy, um, if you're feeling a little disassociated, if you're feeling discombobulated, my own personal experiences, I've been feeling a bit disconnected from my guides and my guardians, even from source. Um, I've felt a bit like suspended animation, not of course disconnected but that's what it feels like and certainly for me um, but we've been getting incredible intensity in the alpha and beta brainwave states if i go back just quickly this here uh on the 18th and 19th was just well, it, i use it off the charts it's a kind of a it's pretty obvious right but over a two-week period we've seen massive spikes above the normal frequency Schumann rays, which is 7.83, which is this status state. So if you've been getting out of your comfort zone um, and getting some downloads, getting you know massive amounts of, of intuition or creativity coming to you, it's because um, the Schumann resonance has been operating in the alpha and the beta brain waves predominantly. Now alpha is it's to 12 hertz is above the normal Schumann resonance, which is okay, it's fine. Um, you need to be an alpha. Um, if, as I said before, if alpha this is 
beg your pardon, of theta is the state that you're in when you're um, kind of switched off. You're in that sleep state, meditative state, or watching TV, uh, immersed in music, um, creativity, that sort of thing. Alpha requires a little bit more of the left brain activity. So this is why people can feel pretty frazzled and, and I suspect um, you know, the expression that you're feeling a little cooked, a little worn out, um, especially if uh, this is going on while you're um, not expecting it. Um, the major rhythm, alpha is 8 to 12 hertz, and we've certainly had frequencies up to 20 and, and even 30 and higher um, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but alpha is the major rhythm seen in the normal relaxed adult. It is present during most of life. It is considered the common state during alertness, but not actively processing information. It's linked to creativity, but what I would call um, mental create, you've been mentally creative. So there is some thought going on. There's some left brain activity going on. Alpha activity is also associated with um, body-mind coordination, alertness and learning. If you're, you know, listening, actively listening, then you're in alpha. So it's more where the left brain might be switched off down here in theta, left brain is becoming, a, this is the intellect, the IQ is becoming a bit more active in alpha. Where we've been with the Schumann resonance is in this beta, uh, beta brain waves, which is 12 to 30. So remember that the baseline here is 7.83, and we've been up around the 12 to 30 pretty heavily um, in the last couple of weeks. This reflects highly active processing. Fast beta is 17 to 30, which is what this all is. This is fast beta, and this will burn people out. Um, and certainly that's how I've been feeling anyway. Heightened alertness. It also triggers the fight or flight response. Um, and I'd add to that fight, flight, excite and ignite and high levels of, quite high levels of anxiety. You get really frazzled with beta, uh, beta brain waves. We've even been having gamma brain waves and I talked about this in my, in my other blog on the Schumann resonance, but pretty rare. But this is associated with waking states and can occur when we are simultaneously processing in both brain hemispheres. So you've got both the left brain and right brain working together. Whales and dolphins operate in these frequencies. Um, and the source of all of this is the, um, is the uh, Brainway, Brainworks Neurotherapy Center in the United Kingdom, which of course has doctors and scientists. Um, for providing this information, so I'm just uh, the messenger. What they do say though is over arousal in certain brain areas is linked with anxiety disorders. So, you know, there's upsides and downsides, and this is why I think it's really important to share about this because there are a lot of people that will be feeling anxiety, they'll be, they'll be having sleep uh, deprivation and problems, nightmares even, they'll be hypervigilant. Uh, there could be a lot of impulsive behavior, anger and aggression, agitation or depression even, a chronic nerve pain um, going on in the last couple of weeks. Um, this is trying to provide some sort of context for, for what may be happening um, for you. The high beta, which is at 22 to 38, is complex. Uh, this is where complex thought are integrating new experiences, high anxiety or excitement. However, continual high frequency processing is not a very efficient way to run the brain, and you can't stay there very long before it wears you out. Um, that's just how our physiology is, it's how we, we are wired. Um, so, if you're wondering why you might be feeling a little frazzled, this would be part of what's going on. So let's have a look at the um, sorry, thing. I'm going to do a new share. 
I'm going to look at the chart um, for the new moon, the full moon. I keep saying new moon. Should be saying full moon. It's all linked. Now, the full moon on February 27 um, at uh, 2117, that's 917 in New Zealand, which is where I am uh, on February 27. It's 317 a.m. Uh, Eastern in the US. Um, the overall theme of this, the moon will be in Leo, you know, mentioned in the introduction, and you'll know by now that I use a galactic astrology. So for those of you straight away that go, oh, no, no, the moon's not in Leo, I'm using a different system uh, to most. Um, it is a recognized system, and I've explained um, my philosophy behind uh, galactic astrology as it relates to ascension and other blogs. I'd encourage you um, to uh, review those. So under the galactic astrology, the moon is in Leo, and you can see that from the screen share, uh, and the sun is in Aquarius. The overall themes of this is um, that it's highly beneficial. So the last couple of weeks um, has been leading to, there's been a fair bit going on, but we've got this, this full moon, which is a beautiful, beautiful um, alignment of the sun and the moon energies and i've got here it's beneficial it's very positive it portends positive shifts in the momentum for humanity and individually um, we'll have a look at the mars conjunct sedna uh, that's really um, there's only a couple of um, things to call out here it's it's very positive and when i look at the chart you know i really do go hunting for obviously the positive but also any negatives but i look at this and i go it's, it's actually amazing um, i'll call out this mars conjunct sedna we'll have a quick look at that very briefly and we'll also have a quick look at the mars is in trying to pluto so here's pluto here and that's really significant um, and i'll touch on that because it's busy and Mars is squared to Pallas Athena, which is this sign here. And that's also really positive. I mean, it's basically, this is just very, very positive time. So given the, the, how frazzled, um, you know, how high frequency um, the Schumann resonance has been operating at over the last couple of weeks leading up to this full moon, so between the new moon and the full moon, I thought it was really awesome just to dwell on and have a good look at this. Um, because I think that we're leading to something which is pretty amazing. Um, the Mars conjunct Sedna and Taurus, I'll touch on that shortly, and the Mars trying to Pluto. What I've written about this is that this is a time of breakthrough. Um, for those of you that do um, look at the archetypes of astrology, Pluto is, is, is fairly, it's dark, but it's transformative energy so this is coming to an end the mars trying to pluto is a fantastic sign astrologically that there's breakthrough and transformation and endings if you've been going through a dark night of the soul experience if you've been battling with shadow work it's over at this full moon that this is a sign that that it's it's going to be behind you you can look forward to that there's a lot of upside to this a full moon and going forward as well. And uh, when I look at the transit of the sun, it's in a part of the chart now, it's going through the constellations where there actually isn't a whole heck of a lot going on. Um, Mars square to Pallas Athena, this is very positive as well, because what we're talking about here with Pallas Athena, who's one of the asteroids, I use, you know, asteroid centaurs, Sedna is a centaur, and I cover those elsewhere. And other blogs i'm just touching on them here because big tip from um from planetary consciousness mars square to Pallas athena Pallas athena represents um creative and strategic insights this is like getting the general's view this is like getting up in the flight deck up at the you know looking down from above Pallas athena has that sort of energy so if you're a creative or a strategic thinker mars square to Pallas athena at this full moon and you'll be feeling the effects of that now because that is in play. Um, if you're feeling very creative, if you're feeling, if you're a big picture person, if you're somebody who likes the big picture, doesn't get into the detail, fill your boots because 
this is one of the positives. So we've got a combination of Mars trying to Pluto, which says that the dark night of the soul, endings of transformational journeys that have been going on for at least 12 months for some people, it's over. Look forward to this. Celebrate. Um, other um, massive signs that this is a very beneficial, positive um, shift um, individually and for humanity is that the sun is trying to star Sirius. Um, as I said, I, I, uh, I bring through a lot of Syrian energy. Um, some bring through Pleiadians, some bring through the Arcturians. I bring through a lot of Syrian energy and the way that I talk about it's one of my big focuses. I wouldn't say that I'm channeling them, but I certainly that's part of my soul family. Um, and the moon is trying Uranus. Uh, so this again, that is just an amazing... Uh, Everywhere you look, v uh, Venus is trying Ceres. Uh, the uh, Ceres is the astro astrological sign which relates to hearth and home. Um, so um, Venus trying Ceres is very positive, uplifting, uh, uplifting energy in terms of hearth and home. Um, when we look at um, the moon here, and this is this uh, Ceres. Your pardon, this is this um, Sedna uh, Mars, and I'm going to have a better look at this. This is the Uranian energy here, and this is Ceres here, sitting in Pisces. Ceres and Chiron are quite close together, um, but there's a beautiful relationship between Venus sitting here and Ceres. There's a beautiful relationship between Mars here and Pluto. These are trines. Whenever you have trines, they're very beneficial energies. And you've got the moon sitting in Leo, which is a wonderful, wonderful place. Expressive. We all know about the lions and the lionesses. I don't need to spend much more time on there. If the moon's there and the sun's in Aquarius, this is all very, very awesome energy. Um, the seasons are changing, of course, on the 28th. Um, so for us in the south and uh, the southern hemisphere, <laughs> we've been enjoying the summer. Um, and of course we're going to be moving into autumn and for those of you in the northern hemisphere you'll be looking forward to moving into spring I'm sure. So Sedna, um, there's a whole story around Sedna which I won't go into here, I'll cover that separately but um, this is a very significant combination. Sedna currently is in Taurus which is a beautiful place for her. Sedna was only discovered I think uh, in the last five years or so in the astrological, you know, confirmed by NASA and the um, space agencies. They've known about Sedna, but she's been officially named. So this is why I'm using her in the, again, this is one of the reasons I use galactic astrology is because you can pull through some of this energy. But with Mars conjunct Sedna, there you can see it's almost exact. Uh, it is exact. Sedna is the female shaman. This is the archetype for the female shaman. Um, the physical and spiritual connection to the earth and the sea. Um, Sedna reminds us um, to be connected to Mother Earth and her provision. The Mars con uh, conjunction of Sedna is all about an agitation and awakening of the green or eco-consciousness um, and how we consume, um, how we reuse, how we dispose of waste. Uh, so it's very much Green and eco-consciousness, Sedna represents the female shaman connection to the land. Um, the square, um, sorry, the conjunction creates friction, tension, impetus and action. Um, when we look at Sirius, I've said that um, the sun is trying to Sirius. So here's the sun here and the star Sirius up here. So that is again worth calling out. Uh, Sirius is a benefit, um, he's positive and encouraging messages come from Sirius and, and definitely this is about massive shifts in consciousness. Those of you that listen to the Syrian High Council, there's a number of channelers that bring through the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Pleiadians, uh, even the Lyrans, um, some people that channel and bring through that energy, but Sirius is a benefit. Now, when we talk about Leo, we're talking about confident self-expression. So when we look at the moon here, confident self-expression, smile on the dial, energetic fun, entertainment, whether that's virtual or physical, I think with the, um, with the sun and, 
with the moon in Leo and the sun in, in uh, Aquarius, uh, virtual um, is going to be just as much fun if you're not able to get out and about. Um, Leo speaks of creativity and celebration. Leo speaks of breakthrough, um, spurred by the Uranian trine and, and the opposition to Aquarius. Remember that uh, the Uranian energy is throwing up a trine through this configuration here. That sign there, which I won't touch on a lot, but that sign is the sign of Orcus. And Orcus is. Orcus is very, very important for ascension. I'm not sure if I've talked a lot about Orcus. Um, and this one here is, is Vesta. In the Roman pantheon, um, the Vestal virgins protected what they call the, the flame, the fire. And I talk a lot about Vesta in one of my other posts. So this is a, that's actually a really, really beautiful place. The moon is in, in a conjunction here in Leo with both Orcus, which is a very high dimensional portal um, to the highest potential of your fine monadic oversoul. This is a this is a portal to that gives you a good look at um, once you've kind of done some shadow work and you're feeling really bullish about ascension. You want to go go beyond the fifth dimension. Orcus contains a lot of that energy, so. There's a lot of potential being triggered here with the moon conjunct because in August is of course opposite um, the sun here. You've also got Vesta, the story of Vesta, which I've, I mentioned before, I've covered in another blog. But the, the, the role of Vesta is very important in the awakening and ascension journey because she represents the Kundalini fire, the flame, um, the feminine energy. But she talks about, um, I mean, Vesta in the Roman pantheon, which is where a lot of the mythology comes from, was, was one of the most highly regarded archetypes. But this is this inward, this is about this inward journey of, of connecting with the divine feminine. So there's a massive amount happening there, um, which is all again, this is why I'm so positive about this. Um, the wheels turning in your favour, though. If you feel like you've been up against it, the wheel is definitely turning and the time has come. I mentioned before about um, Mars and Pluto. It's a trine that's really beneficial part night of the soul. Um, the sun is rising, people. It's, it's uh, this phase of, this has been some heavy, not for everyone, but for some, the heaviness, the wheel's turning. Want to celebrate, put a smile back on the dial. And I think um, we're not going to talk too much about, you know what, CV, but uh, I think when you look across the planet, um, I think we've turned a corner. Aquarius, uh, Aquarian energy, eccentricity, uh, we look at the sun here. There's nothing really going on with the sun. As the sun moves through these part of this part of the the zodiac, these constellations, Aquarian, Pisces, Aries, and there's nothing really going to happen that's particularly dramatic. The sun conjunction cheer on that will happen in the next couple of weeks or so. It'll be fairly significant. Cheer on's the wounded healer. Um, you know, I would say I'll cover that more specifically in another blog. Next kind of boom moment is going to be when the sun comes into um, conjunction with the Uranian energy, which is currently sitting in Aries in the galactic zodiac. That that's on the timing. Uranian Uranian energy or that planet doesn't move much. It'll just kind of stay there. It'll hover around there for quite some time. The moon moves at one degree per day. So around about the middle middle of April. So post Easter, we're going to get some quite interesting energy coming through there when the sun conjuncts Uranian energy and just as a quick recap remember that he is um, the ruler of Aquarius which is where this full moon is and he's in the grand tarot he's number 16 and I talk a lot about this because it's one of my favorite cards as lightning strikes the Tower of Babel the Tower of Babel representing those um, you know institutions um, and 
and really that Saturnian structures. So this is a he's a benefit in my mind. Um, and as the moon, uh, sorry, as the sun is in Aquarius, this is the triggering of a kind of a three or four week period, maybe even a couple of months, where there's going to be some really cool stuff going through in terms of breakthroughs, epiphanies, aha moments. So um, consider this a marker, and, and around about the middle of April, um, there's a two, there's a well, it's, what is it? It's two months. It's about sixty days. It's a sixty day period or window that begins today. That's really, if you want to put the foot down and get into the jet stream of ascension, time to go and leave some of the heaviness behind because the stars and the planets are saying, "Go, go, go." Um, Aquarius, as I mentioned before, eccentricity, um, unusual. This is just this kind of out out of their um, kind of left brain, sorry, not left brain, left field energy. Collective consciousness shifts. Everyone knows about Aquarius. This is very high frequency, high dimensional energy. It's enlightenment and elevation energy. It's innovation and insight. It's eureka moments. It's ecstasy. Um, it's uh, ruled by Uranian. Uh, Uranus, um, uh, who was trying to the moon, um, and it's all about also the Aquarian energy is is about connection, collaboration, community, and crowd. So, as a, a summary, um, this full moon is about emotional, spiritual, and physical integration and synthesis. It's it's a happy and fulfilling time. Um, extremely positive. I've, I've touched on a number of these aspects. Um, you know, serious trine here from the sun. I've touched on the moon in conjunction with Orcus um, and Vesta. Um, I've talked about uh, the trine from Mars through to Pluto, up night of the soul endings. I've talked about this agitation, which is a good thing, by the way, with Sedna reminding us we need to be a lot more uh, aware of the fact that Mother. Earth is, is not only supporting us, but I'm not sure as humans that we are supporting her back. So out of that female shaman um, energy is saying, let's just think about, especially as, as those who are ascending and awakening, there's a lot of work for us to do on this planet to wake it, to awaken people. And, you know, I'm, I'm not only a galactic astrologer, I'm also a business consultant and not and a lot of my focus is around how businesses um, don't do a particularly good job around end of life uh, menu, uh, end of life recycling and reuse and and this sort of thing. But look, this isn't the domain for that. Um, I think that's the summary, and I've touched on the Schumann resonance, and we've had a really good look at that. So hope you enjoy this. Um, love to hear from uh, hear any comments. Put them in the in a, uh, Hello, um, and uh, thank you for your time. It is so, so it is. Namaste.